Okay. Here we go. So far, so good. All right, and you guys can see this, and I, there we go. Oh, I'm so proud. Wow, we can all learn. Okay, thanks, Megan. I love that you're my cheerleader. <laughs> all right, here we go. We're gonna be talking about time management and productivity. And this has been something that has been on my heart for a while, and it's interesting because it is becoming more and more of a conversation that I'm having with you in my one-on-ones whenever I'm reaching out to check on some of you. Uh, for a lot of us, we either um, have babies at home, we are homeschooling, we have full-time jobs, or there are gifts and talents that we use on a daily basis of serving other people in some capacity. Uh, many are taking care of parents or children, uh, that there is someone else that they are having to serve throughout their days. And um, time management and productivity in their business is becoming harder for them. And I think, you know, we always say to work smarter, not harder. Uh, but unless you have the tools to be able to do that, uh, it becomes very, very overwhelming. And you can burn out fairly quickly. And honestly, you just kind of shut down a little bit. And I wanted us to work through this. I remember when I was working full time, and I went to Emerald working full time and full time for me was not an eight hour day. It was normally 12 to 14 hour day. Uh, I worked at a clinic and so it depended on the clients. I couldn't just walk out the door. We had lots of crisis. And so my life, you know, was there to support my nursing staff and um, my volunteer staff. So it just looked different for me. And at that time, my productivity was so high because I had to manage my time. And I remember always thinking, man, whenever I finally left that full-time job, which I left honestly, you know, because the Lord was calling me out, not because I was emerald. But when I finally made that decision, I remember thinking, wow, I'm going to have so much time freedom. And I can't wait and I wonder what my days are going to look like and I can have so much more flexibility. But to be honest, it can be detrimental. If you don't know how to manage your time, you will lose the fullness of productivity. And I see a lot of us wasting our hours. Uh, if we have 30 minutes, if we have one hour, if we have three hours, we end up wasting it more than anything. And I was thinking this weekend, I was working this weekend, I got super frustrated on Saturday because I probably did an hour's work in an app and I used three hours. And I kept thinking of the scripture of, you know, I want to do one thing and my flesh does another. Like that's all I could think about because I was in this viciousness of I kept having to go out on Facebook and look at some information on people that I was contacting but within seconds I would be drawn into it and I would end up scrolling. And then I literally would have to say, Melissa, like, what are you doing? Like, get back to your work. And we do that. We get into this crazy cycle that we lose all of our time if we're not managing it well. And everything that we talk about in network marketing is time freedom. But if you're not disciplined, if you don't know how to manage your time and really schedule your time, which a lot the time freedom you end up having no time whatsoever being overwhelmed wondering what to do next and that's the big thing that i continue to hear is i just don't know where to start i don't know what to do first um i don't know what to do with my hour when i sit down and so i really i want us to talk through that and be able to see what we can do but it really does come down to being disciplined and uh, to be able to get out of that struggle because that is where you're going to see um, the freedom of your time. So the myth that we have is that we crave time freedom, but in the midst of that, exactly what I said, 
it becomes very detrimental unless we know what to do with our time. And it sounds like an oxymoron, right? You think, well, Melissa, I really want to wake up whenever I want to wake up. That's what I think of time freedom, no alarm clock, getting up whenever I want to, and just kind of letting my day happen. But what happens with that is at the end of the day, you've done zero, you get a little bit depressed, you get into a funky mood, you wonder why your business isn't moving forward. So you have to understand um, that time freedom is actually that discipline and control um, and structure. And so by creating a plan, you can actually create more time freedom. And um, that's what we're going to be looking at tonight. So a little bit of an overview as we work through this, um, and this is what I wonder for you. So kind of walk through this with me and tell me, you know, on some of these, would you be raising your hand? Um, have you ever felt confused as to uh, where and what to focus on um, whenever you're focused on your time, like what to do with it? Have you ever felt overwhelmed by everything that you need to do, but you don't know what to do first? Have you ever felt guilty about where you're using your time? Um, you know, you give attention to your team and you feel guilty about your family. You give time to your family and you feel guilty towards your team. I mean, you don't really know how to use that time. Have you ever felt just completely burned out because of how hard you've been working, um, but you just, you feel like I can't keep at this speed forever and I, I need to put those systems into place. So I really want us to look at building a business around our life, not a life around our business, right? We speak of this all the time, but if we don't get some systems and disciplines into place, all of a sudden we're overwhelmed because we feel like our business is controlling us and not us controlling our business. And intentionality is the key to making this happen and to be able to see the success that every one of us are hoping to see um, through this business and what we're doing. So the results of time management, of bad time management, whenever we don't have um, time management in place. A couple of different things. When we are ineffective with our time and scheduling our time and looking at our weekly calendars, uh, these are some of the things that we can experience. We can experience a slow team building process with very little lack of momentum. Uh, it can be a strain on our family and on our relationships. Um, it's an always on lifestyle. How many of you feel like that you always have to be on, like that you always have to have your phone with you, that you're always having to answer questions, um, that you always have to be there for your team? Um, and that ends up being duplicated throughout your team, which is so wrong for us to be doing. We really want to be able to be duplicatable. And honestly, some of our people might be saying, man, if you're 24 seven all the time, like I can't do that. So you really want to be able to manage your time so that you are modeling something that is attractive uh, to your prospects and to your team. And then you're just going to have this extreme burnout, overwhelmed feeling, wondering where to start, feeling that you have way too many things. Over the last several months, I'm like, Honestly, which project do I start? I've got so many different things, so many irons in the fire. Which one do I start? And then you get paralyzed in the process of trying to figure out those things. We really desire to have this positive outcome. Um, and these lifestyles that are good and pleasing to our family, to our friends, to our business, to our team. And it really, it means that you have to be intentional about how you build your business so that you have the type of business that you want in the end, right? But to do that, you have to be intentional with it today, whether you just signed up today or you've been doing this for five years. If this is an area that you are out of balance on, that's really kind of out of control for you, I really want to kind of pull those pieces together because in the end, I want you and I want me to have personal um, and business success. We can have it both, but to do it, we do have to be disciplined. We do have to look at our time and manage our time well and the things that we're doing. I think for all of us, our whole desire was to be able to build our business around our passions, around our family, 
around those areas that are most important to us. And we can do that. Um, and let's not do it by the expense of burning ourselves out um, and feeling so overwhelmed on a continual best basis. So to avoid this burnout and being overwhelmed, this is the area that I really want us to focus on tonight and how we can overcome that overwhelming feeling or thinking I'm running as fast as I can and I'm getting burned out through the process. I think that this is one of the number one reasons why people don't succeed in business. And guys, I meant to tell you in the beginning of this, this is coming from three different areas. Um, the first is, and I'm gonna get the, um, oh my goodness, hang on, I'm not gonna be able to get it. Y'all are gonna know it. Um, uh, it's something morning. Y'all know that that book. It's that. It is um, Michael Hyatt. It's coming from him and it's coming from Bob Heilig. So it's coming from those three areas of what we're pulling together here tonight. I wanted you to know that because I'm going to be giving you some studies, some different things like that. I wanted you to know where I'm pulling that. So I should have shared that in the beginning. So um, the number one reason people um, don't see success in this profession is because of being overwhelmed, being burned out. And the areas that we're going to be talking about tonight is how to create boundaries around your time and eliminate the randomness in your work. Saturday, when I was telling you of my three hour Saturday, which was only one hour of work, I had so much randomness going on and it was frustrating because I had other things that were higher priorities than that moment and that piece of the business. I should have done it in one hour. Um, and so we want to eliminate that. I feel like I'm, a, I'm my own test lab <laughs> from the weekend. Um, because if we do this, if we create these boundaries and we eliminate this randomness, we're actually going to be more productive and be able to have better time management to be able to do this. I mean, studies show that if you will, um, if you don't create boundaries and you have this sense of being overwhelmed and everything is getting to where there's too many projects and you don't know what to do first and you start getting just this burnout of, I can't keep this up our brains will shut down. I mean, studies show our brains are set to protect and they go into survival mode and they shut down on us to where we can't be productive. So for some of us, we really have to step back, regroup, reset everything in motion before we can even move forward. So the first thing that I wanna look at is uh, creating those boundaries um, around your time. And whenever I am talking about this, what we're talking about is those boundaries, they are clear rules of when you will and when you will not be working your business. And we talk about this guys often, but we end up being 24 seven in some cases. We, um, the other night, you know, I was out with family. I shouldn't have been on my phone. I was on my phone um, during dinner and I'm like, no, those aren't my business hours. I, I need to be fully focused on my family and I need to be fully focused on business. And those are two separate times on my calendar that I schedule. And whenever I schedule them well, then family nights are great nights because I've been so productive in the time that I had to do my business and I feel really, really good about it. And that's what we're wanting to do. For most people, those boundaries are non-existent, um, especially kind of like whenever I was sharing with you a little bit early of working full time, um, when you've had a work schedule and you've, you've kind of lived in that world, you do have to manage your time. You do have projects, you do have deadlines. For a lot of us that are coming into network marketing, we possibly have never had a job, um, possibly where we did have to manage time the way that we do. And so it is a skill that can be learned, but it's a skill that you need to be intentional with. So the results of never being off um, is that our family feels neglected, our spouse feels neglected, our friends feel neglected, and honestly, we feel neglected, right? Um, we feel like we don't have the self-care that we should have because we are always on, and that's where you're gonna get burned out, and that's what we're trying to keep from happening um, for that. So having periods of dedicated rest and renewal, that is critical for you to be able to reach your full potential. And so it's crucial that you unplug because if you don't, um, 
it's going to be a killer of your productivity. It is a joy to unplug. It's a joy to have sabbatical and it needs to be a joy to be able to work and know exactly what you need to be doing and what task you need to be doing during that 30 minutes, during that hour, during that three hours, whatever it looks like for you. And the big thing is, you know, being able to go through this, there's going to be times where you do have to expand your time, especially if you're running after a very specific goal, but that's not always. Um, so there might be times where, you know, there's not that rest piece, but you know that it's coming. So definitely realize that there are, um, there are seasons that you will go through in regards to this. So to unplug is just as important for your team to see as it is for your family to experience. And it's really, really critical for long-term success. So your team needs to see it because you are modeling to them. If we are currently dysfunctional in this area, we need to clean ourselves up and be able to do this well and make it habitual because we want to model it to our team because we are promising them this freedom because of network marketing, but in that we have to be disciplined and we want to model that discipline side, but it's just as critical for those family experiences for them to know that I've got my mom, I've got my dad. Um, whenever they're with me, they're all present. Same thing with our spouses and being able to do that. So a little bit of examples around our boundaries. So your business hours, you know, when you are in, you're in, and when you're closed, you're closed. Uh, boundaries around what questions you'll answer and what questions your team needs to look on their own for resources. This has been a really interesting conversation that I've had over the last several weeks of, um, you know, some of our team not realizing that they can go find this, this on their own. And uh, when I started, we've been so blessed over the last several years with incredible resources, unbelievable YouTubes. We have a back office that's getting more and more tools. We need to allow our people to know how to find them. It's up to us to share those pieces, but then direct them on how to get those questions. Don't always be answering those questions for them. Um, because they need to learn how to be efficient on their own and they want to teach that to their people uh, And I had someone over the last couple of weeks of just like oh, I didn't even I didn't even know that I could do that or oh I didn't even know that the search tool was on our pages um, And so those are setting really good boundaries of saying, you know in the beginning We're gonna answer a lot of questions for our new ambassadors because we're gonna be walking side by side with them but over time, we're going to pull back, kind of point them into the directions that they need to be finding those questions. And then after a while, you're like, we're, we're going to let them fly on their own. So being able to work through that. And then being on 24-7 isn't good for anyone. And it's not duplicatable. Um, so making sure uh, that we've got those boundaries. Um, setting healthy boundaries is promoting a lifestyle to model to your team. And it promotes freedom. It promotes rest, it promotes renewal, and those are good things. And those are longevity, <laughs> that's lasting, that's creating that legacy. We all desire to have this legacy. To get there, we need to really set some boundaries so that we can have that long-standing, healthy business. So let's talk a little bit about tips. Um, to be able to implement this. <clears throat> Excuse me. So set those business hours and let your team know when you're available. Um, I will say I have never like put on my page what my business hours are. I do have some level ones that have said so many times, hey, tell me what your business hours are. I'm going to schedule my three-way calls around what your what your schedule is and I'm like man thank you for teaching me to set my boundaries <laughs> but if we would start sharing with our team either in a personal um, message 
or a thread or placing it on your team page if you happen to have one. Let them know what your hours are. And a great thing about this is that you can do it on a weekly basis. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. So yes, those hours can be flexible um, or, you know, around specific times, especially if you've got kiddos that you're taking care of, uh, knowing that there's flexibility. But if you in some way can implement something so they know about the time. Like when I was working full time, my team knew that they would only hear from me at lunch and they would hear me after hours. They knew that those were my boundaries. So being able to do that. So schedule time each day or evening where you're 100% focused on your family, on your spouse, on yourself. Those things are good for implementing schedule that time. And we're gonna go through a schedule later. So be ready for that. We're gonna, we're gonna talk through every bit of this. The second thing that I want us to look at is eliminating the randomness from work. And this is how you're gonna do that. You're gonna clearly define your life's priorities. And you need to sit down and do this. Like, what are those? Um, Shelly, I can still see you on here. Will you just tell me, can you hear the craziness in my house at the moment? Okay, perfect. I always put these in, but I do have a boy home now and he brings all his boys over, which is awesome, but it gets super loud and I get a little bit nervous. Um, so clearly defining your life's priorities. What's most important to you? That's what we're talking about here. It's not a time issue. It's a priority issue. And you really can be successful with less time, but what are those priorities? Um, and hopefully, you know, one of those is your business, right? Hopefully that is one of your priorities, but you need to define what those are. And then you're going to schedule your business hours of operation around that. You need to be very intentional um, and it forces you to become productive. I have my most productive days when I've scheduled my business hours and I schedule out exactly what I'm going to be doing in those hours. Um, then you're gonna create a structure and a plan for prospecting, for social media, for group trainings, for follow-ups, um, all those pieces, your postings that you're gonna be doing, all of that is gonna be set into a plan. And then lastly, it's really important that you focus 80% of your time on income producing activities. And guys, honestly, if you will do your income producing activities first, Number one, it feels amazing to have accomplished it. And number two, everything else falls into place. 80% of your time has to go towards that. So if you only have an hour, you need to break out that hour. 80% of that time is going to IPAs. That's how you're going to grow your business. Um, so you have to be focused there and your team might not get as much time. And a lot of us, we even heard last week from some of our leaders, they said, man, I, I got into management mode and I got to pull out of that. And I think we're all trying to help each other be accountable in that area. We're trying to grow in this area, but whenever you get it scheduled and focused, you're going to be way better. First thing this morning, I did my IPAs um, early, early, and it, felt so good because I knew without a doubt that the rest of my day, whatever happened for the rest of my day, I, I was already successful because I had done my IPAs. And the cool thing, you know, for me today, it doesn't happen every day, but for me today, because of my IPAs and the last several weeks, not just today, but as you know, I got a new ambassador and I got two new customers today as well. So doing those things up front, knowing, okay, I can breathe. Like even if life happens today and the rest of my schedule gets messy and I don't get anything else done, I've done my number one priority for my business um, so that I can move forward and be successful. And that, that's really what we are wanting you to look at is being able to set those business hours. It's going to keep you from feeling overwhelmed and being able to put together a structure and a plan towards it. Many people will say that they don't have enough time uh, to effectively grow their businesses, but having an, more time, that's not going to be your answer. Just like me on Thursday, on Saturday, I had three hours. <laughs> it wasn't that I needed more time. It's that I needed to make very specific things a priority. That's the answer is pro prioritizing your life, prioritizing your day, your schedules, and being able to move through your weeks in that manner. 
So you don't have to work harder, but you have to work with less randomness um, and be able to remove those pieces. So let's talk a little bit about scheduling your week in advance. And how many of y'all, just a show of hands, schedule your days, your weeks? Anybody doing that currently? Or currently do you really just kind of start your day and just hope you can fit it in? Okay, maybe put some stuff in the chat. I want us to talk through that. I'd love to hear where you are. Um, but let's talk about this. So if you successfully uh, schedule your days in advance, these are the four things that I really want us to be able to look at and to be able to do. Clearly define your priorities in life. So write those things down. What is it that is most important to you? What are you wanting to do, um, you know, three years from now, five years to, from now, end of year? Those things need to be some of your top priorities. Of course, family is going to be priority. Health might be priority. Spiritual growth, personal growth. But what are those priorities? Because that's what you're going to be putting into your days, okay? Define what tasks um, take place to accomplish your priorities. So what task is going to move your needle forward? What is going to help you get there? And then you're going to create this weekly ideal schedule. Uh, this is a um, Michael Hyatt. Um, and he has a great planner. Some of you guys might have his planner. Bob Heilig has also built from Michael Hyatt's scheduling um, and how he has trained us. Hey guys. Um, and then after you create that, we're gonna implement your schedule with speed. So we're gonna talk through each one of these. And one thing that I wanna say as we get started, because as I was building this presentation and thinking through this, I know for many of you, you know, I want you to know that there's no such thing as a perfect week. None of us will ever make this work to perfection. Today, I thought that I was gonna have four hours to work on something and it took six. It took longer than I thought. I have those hours in my day. I know many of y'all don't, but the point is it's never perfect. You're going to have different things that happen where you think, wow, somebody got sick and I just, my whole day is gone now. So there's never a perfect day. It's all about taking baby steps and doing one thing at a time. But this is the point, guys. When you schedule your days, Whenever you set in motion what your priorities are for that day and the tasks that have to happen, you are already one step closer to success because you've got it right in front of you. And when you're able to get to it, if your day doesn't go the way you expected, you already know what you need to be doing. So you're that much closer to being successful that day. So that, those are the important pieces. And that's what's gonna bring clarity to your days, clarity to your business, clarity to what you need to do. Um, like I said, I, I, this has been a heavy burden for me because of the conversations that I'm having with so many of you. Uh, people that are you know, starting new jobs, getting promoted, leaving a job, thinking that they were gonna have more time and now they're flailing because they're not doing anything well. We've gotta get a grip on this if we wanna be successful. And I want you to be successful. I want myself to be successful. So this is an area that I work on on a continual basis. Um, okay, so define your priorities. Um, let's look at this uh, because a lot, of, a lot of people, they're not sure what their priorities are. Um, and what they should be. So I want us to look at that because how you spend your time, what they say is how you spend your time and how you spend your money are the two best areas to gauge where your priorities are in life. So just take a second to think about that. How you spend your time and how you spend your money is right now where your priorities are in life. That might need to be adjusted a little bit. Um, or you might say, yeah, it's dead on. Uh, so start thinking about what that is, how it needs to be looked at differently, and where you need to maybe direct resources to be able to change, okay? So to focus on your priorities, you need to define those. And you're, what we really wanna do is identify just two to three priorities. We don't wanna get overwhelmed. We could make a list of 10, 15, 20. Then we're gonna get overwhelmed and burned out. Let's just start with two or three. And you might have a whole list, 
you know what, take that list and say, okay, what are two or three of my top priorities? Because once we can X those off, get those going, stay focused, then we can move into another area. It could be faith, family, your business, health and fitness, school, teaching, full-time job, um, whatever that is. But now I want you to think about how you're spending your time and do they correlate with your priorities? So if you're just randomly using up your time, you're not moving your needle in any way of becoming a better you in the areas that are your biggest priorities as mom, wife, um, employee, entrepreneur, all those areas. These priorities become foundational for creating your ideal week. So that's why it's so important to be able to pull what, um, what this is. And then defining your priorities prompts you. This is the part that I love because it helps you know what to say no to. It lets you know what are your non-essentials. Um, and those non-essentials you need to say no to. You need to say yes to the things that are going to help you meet what your priorities are. Um, and so being able to remove and getting really, really clear as to what should be a yes and what should be a no. Um, and, you know, guys, don't feel guilty about saying no. No could be a season. I'm going through a season right now that I've had to say no to something. And every day I get a little bit frumpy about it and then I have to go, no, there's a reason I'm saying no. It's just a season. It doesn't mean it's forever. And so work through that and don't feel guilty about it. You know, don't go through a long grieving period about it because you can't be productive in that. Uh, just know that this is an area for you to be able to move forward in your life the way that you desire to and reach the goals that you desire to reach. It's really important to be able to say no um, and be able to set everything else in, into motion. So a prioritized life is not a balanced life. You're going to go all in on what matters the absolute most right now. Uh, like I said, some of you guys are pushing pedal to the metal. You've got some really heavy goals for the end of the year. You've got some really heavy goals for uh, July 31st of next year. So your life might not be balanced, but the great thing of knowing your priorities is that you might have to say no to a lot of stuff. If your business is a priority, your family's a priority, your faith is a priority, that might be your space. And so you might have to say no to everything else right now because those are your tops. And you know that if you really make your business a priority, you can pull back a little bit and bring something else back in at a later season. So it's not forever. It's just for now as you build your future freedom and as you build your legacy. And I love being able to hear that. I love being able to say, okay, it's seasonal. It's just for right now. And I'm going to be all in and I can relax and adjust and change uh, with time. And another thing is it really pushes me hard to hit my goals because um, whenever I hit my goals, I can adjust and change. So, you know, I was just talking to my husband before we got on here tonight um, that there's some areas that I'm pushing hard so that I can adjust uh, where my priorities are lying right now. So let's look a little bit about creating your week and um, what that's going to look like. And the big thing in regards to this is, um, and many of us do this, and it's something that I'm learning more and more not to do, and it's a beautiful thing, is no more crash landing into Monday. Don't wake up Monday morning and go, wow, I wonder what I should do today. I wonder what my week should look like. You need to be doing that ahead of time. Um, you need to be making time every week for what's the most important. No more running your business randomly. We're really going to get it set in motion uh, to be able to do everything. And the cool thing about this is like every hour, and I'm going to show you my schedule, a, a couple of different schedules um, that I've been doing, but every hour has to have a name. For me, it's quiet time, workout, it's lunch. Uh, if you have school hours or you're homeschooling or you're personal time, your quiet time. So that is a zero based schedule is being able to set it up with everything has a name to it. And that's so important to do that because the key is to focusing on what's on your schedule that hour. 
It makes you feel accomplished. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel 100% focused and all in because you, you know that you've set time for other things later. So because you've scheduled it, you know that you can give 100% right here because you're going to be with those babies whenever they wake up from nap time or you can work your day because you know you're going to have family time at the night, um, th different things like that. So then you relax. You'll never have the perfect week. That's a big one is understanding that it could all crash. And you know what? You're going to try it again tomorrow. But just like I said earlier, it gets you one step closer to being successful because you might be able to do one thing that day. If everything goes crazy that day, because you planned in advance, you might be able to get a couple of things done and squeeze those things in um, because of that planning a little bit ahead of time. So the benefits of being able uh, to create your weeks in advance. It allows you to make time every day and every week for your priorities and what's most important. Don't allow your weeks to get hijacked. And I do this so often uh, because I end up filling my calendar. Um, if I'm a very visual person. So if my calendar does not have blocks on it for study time, or blocks on it for quiet time or workout times, different things like that, I end up filling it up with other things that aren't necessarily a priority. Um, and so I, this allows you to be able to set your priorities because you're going to set those things first. You're going to schedule those priorities first and you're not going to let anything get in the way of that. Um, and, you know, like I said, the key is focusing on what that is. There's no wasting time on what to do next because you already know what you're going to do next. Today, I broke out when I run errands. And what errands am I going to run? I'm going to go to Whole Foods. I'm going to mail all my packages. Uh, putting all those things down. Going to the pharmacy. I made time for that. I knew that I was going to have 20 minutes to have my shake. Um, and breaking that down. So you immediately feel like you have more time. Like it gets you excited because you're not overwhelmed and you're not questioning, okay, what do I have to do next? Some of you might say, well, Melissa, I, I, I put down 10 things that I have to do today and I just know that I have to get them done. If you don't schedule them, most probably they're not getting done. Um, so scheduling that time to be able to do it it's going to get those done more quickly. I do way better running errands when I write down that I'm running errands. Otherwise, I procrastinate. Um, so putting those things down. When you're off and spending time with your family, turn off your phone, guys. Be all in with your family. Leave your phone behind. I, I'm really working hard on leaving my phone in another room whenever I'm having dinner, whenever I'm spending time with my family, whenever I'm seeing my son, different things like that. So be able to walk completely away because you did your business hours. You did your time. Your approach to your schedule. Don't do everything you can do in a day. Instead, do everything you should do in a day. Not everything that you can do, everything you should do. And those are your priorities. That's moving your needle a little bit forward. That's knowing what your goals are with your business and being able to say what should be done for me to get there, which is going to be prospecting, sharing, uh, you know, telling someone about the opportunity, adding new customers, adding new ambassadors, posting, doing your social media, those kinds of things. So let's talk a little bit um, about what you're thinking. Let me flip over here a little bit. So there's no way, okay. Um, as I was doing this, there's some of y'all that I could see your faces as I was thinking about sharing this with you. You know, there's no way that I can do this. I have kids at home. I homeschool. I work full time. I take care of another person that takes up all of my time. Make the plan and do your best to stick to it. Because when life happens, it's going to happen. But when you have an hour in your day, you have your priorities and your list right in front of you, then you can get to work immediately whenever you have that moment. You're going to accomplish way more if you have it scheduled. And always have a plan B. You know, maybe you have your one hour of doing your business set early morning or during nap time or during lunchtime and something happens and you, you're needed. Maybe you have another hour later in your evening after the kids go to bed or after you've had dinner 
and that becomes your plan B. And if that can't happen, guys, these, you know, for those of us that are recovering perfectionists and think, wow, I set a goal and a plan and now I'm frustrated, give yourself some grace because tomorrow is going to be a better day. But now you've already got your list. And so you move your list over. Okay. So I want us to talk a little bit about a morning ritual. And this piece is super important to be able to work through. Um, many of you guys were on with us last year with Justine Folkler, who really worked through uh, her morning ritual. And it was super great. Everyone does this a little bit different and everybody has different amounts of time. So know those things. None of us are going to look alike. What I think is the most important thing for you to understand is to have one. Uh, don't wake up in the morning and get hijacked immediately. So let's talk through this a little bit. Studies show that how you start your day has everything to do with how you end your day. Your start is going to impact your end and it's monumentally affected with your productivity. So you have to begin your morning with a plan. Uh, for many, you're very, very reactive. You wake up, you grab your iPhone or your smartphone, you check social media, Facebook, um, you go out and look at Instagram, any texts that you got, any messengers that you got, your emails, it kills your productivity when you do that. Your morning ritual, if you will set one in place, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, that piece is up to you. That you define, you control it. <laughs> you define it will put you in a state of mind of accomplishment and a momentum immediately before you get out of bed. You need to be in control. You do not need to be reactive. How many of us wake up and that's exactly what we do is we jump on our phone and we look there first. A lot of us do that before we spend time with the Lord. We do that before we get our first cup of tea or coffee or whatever it is. We can't allow that because we immediately go into reactive. We immediately think that we have to start responding. Guys, if you set your morning ritual first, get yourself in control, allow yourself to pray, be with the Lord, go through your different pieces. It's going to be a much better day being able to do that. That is a winning day for you. You are intentional. You're not jumping into this battle of being so responsive and reactive, but you're being proactive and you're being able to get into a point of productivity immediately in your morning. And so that is super, super important to be able to do. Um, did you know? that studies have shown that a small act of hitting the snooze, I don't know, how many of you guys read The Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins? She talks about this a lot in that book. Um, hitting the snooze button on your alarm can cost you up to four hours of productivity, which is still a little bit mind blowing. <laughs> um, but this is what's amazing, is that your first three hours of your day is the most productive and has the greatest willpower. And this is really, really, really true. Um, so if you are setting your alarm and you are a person that continually hits your snooze button, a couple of things that you can do, some stuff that I did in the very beginning, especially trying to wake up a little bit earlier, I would put it in my bathroom. I'd put it in a drawer. I would set more than one alarm in another location, like two minutes after. And um, I will tell you that I would apologize to my husband ahead of time the night before, especially whenever I was trying to get into a morning ritual because I knew I was going to fail <laughs> a couple of times, right? I knew I wasn't going to perfect it immediately. And I knew that it was going to wake him up and disturb him. So if you are that person, you need to find a place where you can move it into another area, um, get your phone away from your bed so that you will get up immediately. Another thing about your, um, this study of the first three hours of your day is the most productive. It is, it's such a true point and the greatest willpower. I will say, especially being in critical care, uh, as I was in working in the medical clinic, uh, for many of us, we had to make um, some of our hardest decisions 
we really wanted to make those decisions early in the morning, like before 12 o'clock. And I still try to live around that because you're more alert first thing in the morning than later in the day. So if there are some critical areas that you're needing to make some pretty big decisions for your business, for your family, for your finances, it's really important that you focus on those areas earlier because decision making is really higher, productivity is higher, willpower is higher. The later in the day, the more you lose that. Um, so your mornings are critical. Whether you say I'm a morning person or a night person, studies show that those first you know, two or three hours, and you might, not, you might be a person that wakes up at seven or eight and that's your normal time of waking up, those first two to three hours are the most productive. So use that time well, whatever time that is that you're getting up and getting moving. So let's talk about this a little bit. Oh, the book is called Miracle Morning. Sorry, I got it. Uh, Miracle Morning is the one I was talking about. And Justine did some great training on that. If you haven't read the book, it's excellent. And it is those first 30 minutes that you're really looking at. Um, you know, put your phone on airplane mode. Uh, but you're going to set, a, you know, create a list of three to five simple, like simple yet important tasks. Think, think of things that you should be doing to better yourself, but you don't seem to have the time to do. And you're going to set up a ritual within those 30 minutes. You know, maybe it's reading for 30 minutes, a meditation or prayer or a quiet time for 10 to 15 minutes. Um, physical activity, uh, journaling, affirmations or affirmations. If you don't know the difference between the two, yell at me on that and I would love to help you understand the differences of those. But you want to do that every day. I know with Justine, she would color. She would spend about five minutes of coloring. So that's her morning ritual. We all have something different. My morning ritual is a little bit longer. Uh, my, you know, It's always a workout. Um, it's always a quiet time and it's an, always a setting a pace of the day. So I set my schedule the night before and I'm not always perfect at that, but that's what I try to do. And then the next morning during my morning ritual, it's the last thing that I do of checking to see if my day still is going to be the way that I set it the night before or if something happened or if I needed to add something. Another piece is I really work hard on doing at least 10 minutes of reading because I have a million books that I should be reading right now and I don't ever find the time in my day. But if I do it as part of my morning ritual, I'm at least moving my needle forward. And that's the most important piece for all of us. So then lastly, or one of the last pieces that I wanted to talk about is implementing with speed. And this is so critical for you to be able to get these pieces in place. It really does determine your success. It's super important that you get into action of even looking at these different things and being able to see how successful people have blocked their time and scheduled their times out. Um, and you might think, where do I start? Number one, you know, just even work through what are your priorities? What are the tasks that you need to be doing, et cetera, and get started. You'll perfect it over time, but you'll never perfect it unless you do the very first action. So pick one thing and you need to really jump in and get going. If you feel like you're stuck right now, you need to get into action. You need to start moving something and moving that dial. You assume, this is a really big thing. You know, we all assume that others know what they're doing before they jump in. It's a wrong assumption. They're taking action and they're taking a risk and they're jumping in and they're gonna figure it out as they go. A lot of us fail forward. Um, and sometimes that's judged incorrectly. Uh, failing forward is success uh, because at least they jumped in, at least they took the risk and then they figure it out as they go. It brings more success of doing that. If you wait until you think that you're ready, you're going to be a person that's going to do tons of training, tons of reading, tons of taking notes, and you've done nothing and your business has not moved forward in any way because you didn't just jump in and get going. So lastly, I really want you to look at defining your success list. Um, and this is at your, the end of your morning ritual. You're gonna do it every week, but you're also, so your week might have a success list, but then your days have to have success lists to be able to fulfill your goals for the week. 
So you're going to pick three tasks that are the most important for you today. Like out of all of the things that you need to do this week, what are the three most important, highest priorities right now that's going to move that needle forward? And that's your success list. And that's what you're going to get done today. And if life happens and things go wrong, you're going to move it to tomorrow. But three things to do today. Focus 100% of your time and effort on those tasks. If you have 30 minutes, they're focused on those tasks. If you have an hour, they're focused on those tasks and getting those done. And then, of course, if you don't accomplish it. The big piece of that is that whole Pareto's Law, which is, you know, 20% of your activities are created out of, is 80% of your success. So you really are going to have 20% of your activities and you're going to work on that and it's going to be able to move you forward in your success. Okay. And then I want to end with this and then I'm going to show you a little bit of what I do. But this is such a great quote, quote, and it says this, productivity isn't about being a workhorse, keeping busy or burning the midnight oil. It's about priorities, it's about planning, and it's about fiercely protecting your time. If you want to have leave a legacy, if you want to make an impact, if you want time freedom for your family, if you want to change the course of your future, you, we have to get this part in place to be able to do it. So I hope that that has been good. I'm going to show you something. We've got a little bit of homework, but I did want to share with you. Um, like for my day today, started at 5.30 this morning, and I blocked out everything. 5.30 to 6.30, um, I had uh, a workout early this morning, 7 to 8, so I gave myself to get a driving time home. I had my quiet time for an hour from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock. I did my IPAs at eight o'clock to nine o'clock. At nine o'clock, I put in drive time and I went to a second workout. And obviously you can hear from me saying that, workout and health and fitness is a priority for me. And so you're gonna see it's, on, it's gonna be pretty much every day for me. Um, that's on here, 11 o'clock I ran my errands. I gave myself one hour. 12 o'clock, I had my shake from 12 to 12.20, and then I started working on my business and training and getting this presentation ready um, today. Another thing is, like if you look at, I don't know how well you can see this. Um, hopefully you guys can see this. This is kind of my schedule, but if you look at that, I will have, if you, I break down, so mine is broken down into three points. You're gonna see people I talk to down here. You're gonna be, see my schedule right here. You're going to see my task up here. I do that every single day. You're going to see it all the way across. So I know my task at the top. I know my schedule in the middle for every single day. And I know the people I talk to every single day. Um, that's in here. Another thing, some of you guys might even have this. It's a super great one. Let me see if I can pull it out. This is just one. This is back on, it looks like in August. These, um, this comes with my planner, but you can figure out one. But if you see it, it's got like your days and your times. I literally break it all the way out. Um, when, I don't follow that every day, guys, because I screw up sometimes. I mess up. I don't get myself organized for my week. All kinds of things. My most productive days and weeks are whenever I do this. Um, and I get so much accomplished. I feel good about myself. I'm not overwhelmed. I know exactly what I need to be doing every single day. Um, I've got it all written down and ready to go. So I would love, if you're up for it, um, to give you a little bit of homework and I, I'm going to take this off as soon as we do this and if there's something you want to chat about we can talk about it or you can put it in our comments on our team page and we can work through it but your homework is to list your top two to three priorities figure out what those are in your life your life goals your business goals and then create your work week in your planner I would love to work through this with you. We can do a lunch and learn. We can do a one-on-one. -on -one. If this is something that's really important to you, it's gonna give you what you need. It's gonna make you so productive. I'm all into helping you do that. Uh, make your success list. So what are your tasks for your day? Remember three tasks. And then I really want you to share that with your family. Let your family see that you have family time, that you have play time, 
that you've got time to homeschool, that you've got time for, you know, dinner dates and going out with your spouse and being able to do those things. Let them see that it's not all about business every single night if you're working full time or different things like that. Um, and then share it with your upline if that is something, if your upline is also working the business or your accountability partner. Let them see it. Start being accountable towards it. It's, it's fun. It's exciting. You set really strong boundaries and you're incredibly productive, which takes away burnout and it takes away feeling overwhelmed. Um, so I'm going to stop the share real quick. Was that, was it good to work through that? Is that helpful? Tori, thank you. You're saying yes. Susan, good. Great. Jody. Okay. Um, let me see. Are there any questions real quick? I'm going to actually stop the recording.